Hello and welcome to Patriot Pets. My name is Lake Green and I'm so excited to be back here for the fourth episode of our new lecture series titled The Fall of 1776. We'll be taking an in-depth, step-by-step look of the Fall 1776 campaign. In my opinion, the most pivotal time in American history, uh, a period of the American Revolution where pretty much our all was at stake. And in on so many unlikely occurrences, the American army was, against all odds and in the face of all logic and reason, able to prevail against the mighty British. Um, before we go any further into the topic of the video, again, and I'm going to remind you every video, I can only talk about so much in a 10 to 15 minute lecture. What I can do, though, is refer to you to a phenomenal work titled 1776 by David McCulloch. This book will give you everything you need to know and will tell you way more than I can in 10 to 15 minutes about that fall campaign and I highly recommend it. It's a phenomenal work. Mr. McCulloch passed away just a month ago. Uh, what a great master historian of the American Revolution. May he rest in peace. So for this video, our topic today is of the Battle of Harlem Heights, which occurred on September 15, 1776, the day after the Battle of Kipps Bay or the Kipps Bay Affair, when the British Army uh, landed in Manhattan, uh, crossing the East River from Brooklyn. So in this fourth video, we discuss the Battle of Harlem Heights, which occurred on September 16th, as I stated. Um, and during this battle, the Americans achieved their first tactical victory, a really strategic victory against the British. It really wasn't significant um, in terms of any sort of um, military or you know lasting consequence, but from a morale standpoint, the American army, you know, obtained a victory, a small one, um, that really kind of gave a little boost, a jolt to the sinking uh, morale of the weary Continental soldiers uh, that were deployed in Manhattan. So following the British landing at Kipps Bay the day before, the Continental Army was now concentrated in their positions at Harlem Heights, above the town, the small village of Harlem at the time. In lower Manhattan and on Manhattan Island in general at the time, there were only three settlements. One in New York City, which was really around Battery Park and Lower Manhattan, very small, nothing like the immense metropolis we know today. Uh, on the western side of the island at Greenwich Village, a little bit above New York City. And also in the northern extreme of the island near Westchester County, the modern day Bronx, um, or the village of Harlem. In between was all woods, farmland, rolling hills, sparsely populated. It was very different than the New York we know today. Um, so the American army of 9,000 men was concentrated around Harlem Heights, um, and they were pretty much at a standstill. Washington was determined not to give up uh, Manhattan Island. He wanted to keep at least a foothold, a toehold on the island, Whether it's, even though it was in the north. He wanted to hold on to that ground in order to be able to maybe in the future stage some sort of counter push against the British. I don't really know. Uh, he even probably knew deep down that there was no way without any naval support the Americans would ever be able to take New York City again. Um, but he was still determined to hold on to the ground he still had possession of. At this time, the British Army is pretty much all massed in, in lower Manhattan at this point. The Navy is sailing up and down the rivers with impunity. And uh, General Howe is biding his time. Again, that'll be a, a key theme here in the fall of 1776. The British Army moves at a slow pace. And General Howe, when he has the chance to take real initiative and just crush the Americans, he never really puts his foot down on the gas pedal. And the Americans are very fortunate because of that. So basically, September 16th comes the day after the landing at Kipps Bay. The American army is now concentrated in Harlem Heights. Um, they would have lost thousands more men in Lower Manhattan had they not been able to escape up the narrow road that um, is near modern-day Lexington Avenue in Manhattan. Uh, we talked about that in the last video. Uh, the men under the command of General Israel Putnam that was still stationed in New York City were able to go up that road and retreat to Harlem in the really getting arriving there by uh, my nightfall uh, right under the, the, the noses of the British Army that had been fanning out into lower Manhattan and throughout Manhattan Island. Because Howe was so you know lethargic and slow in you know taking the initiative, as I said, he left that, that one main pass wide open on the western side of the island and all of the American artillery and thousands of men were able to, by the skin of their teeth, again, by luck, miracle, whatever it may be, get to Harlem and avoid certain capture. That would have been devastating to the American army off the bat again. But again, this will be a theme throughout the entire fall. 
The Americans coming this close to catastrophe and by some lo- unlogical, no rational, you know, basis of a reason, they're able to somehow, you know, get out of it by some fault or of the British or just by some stroke of luck. So here it is, morning of September 16th. Washington sends a detachment of 150 men under the command of Thomas Knowlton, Lieutenant, Lieutenant Colonel Thomas Knowlton, known as Knowlton's Rangers, to probe the British positions below Harlem Heights. Thomas Knowlton was born and raised in Massachusetts and Connecticut. He's a New England man through and through. He's in his 30s at this time. He was a veteran of the French and Indian War, so he has military experience, and he's a courageous, brave um, man. And he served with distinction in the Siege of Boston, and Washington, arriving in 1775 in command of the Continental Army, realized so quickly the talents of this man that he promoted him by the time they got to New York to lieutenant colonel and literally gave him the authority to handpick 150 men to form a an elite group of reconnaissance uh, rangers that would become known as Knowlton's Rangers. Uh, and these men were would be scouting, reconnoitering the British positions, raiding, foraging, all that, you know, really dangerous missions, and yet they did it, you know, quite well. So Knowlton and his 150 uh, Rangers go and move below the heights into the valleys and the areas below the American position in northern Manhattan, and uh, lo and behold, in the early morning hours, they run into a small contingent of British light in his infantry under the command of Brigadier Alexander Leslie. Two of these three companies of infantry decide to form up and attack the Rangers. A brief skirmish ensues uh, surrounding two farms and a whole bunch of woods in the area. Eventually, the Americans realize their flank is going to be turned and, they ha- and Knowlton orders a hasty retreat. He does this in good order. The Americans, you know, fall back, firing as they as they retreat. They don't run. They don't panic like the day before. Uh, a very different picture in just 24 hours when you have, you know, well-trained and the right soldiers to do it in a small action. And the Americans will prove that the, throughout the entire war that in small actions, they can stand toe-to-toe with the British. But on an open battlefield, it's a completely different story. Knowlton and his men retreat to a position right below the main American line in Harlem Heights. They reform, and after briefly consulting with aides on Washington's staff, um, specifically Colonel Joseph Reed, who we'll highlight later on in this uh, series. He'll play a role in a lot of other episodes, I'm sure. Uh, Reed rides back up to Washington and informs him of the action, who knows what's good. Washington hears the noise, doesn't know what's going on, and says, we need to reinforce these rangers. They're keeping the British at bay. At the same time, men of the 42nd Highlanders, under the command of uh, a Scottish officer, there are a group of Scottish men uh, from the British 42nd Regiment of Foot. They're Highlanders. They wear their kilts, you know, distinct uniforms. Reinforce the light infantry. So now hundreds of men are starting to mass on both sides. Washington sends 150 volunteers out into a valley right below the American Heights in Harlem, their high ground positions. It's a valley called the Hollow Way. It's just open fields, woods, and sloping areas, pretty flat, right below the, the heights where the American main army of 9,000 men is positioned. And these 150 men, reinforced with a couple hundred in their rear, just start firing at the British from a distance in order to distract the main gathering force of British soldiers uh, and keep them you know, in, in one place. At the same time, Washington reinforces Knowlton's Rangers with the group of Virginia riflemen under the command of Major Leach. Leach was his last name, L-E-I-T-C-H, and his small group of riflemen, maybe number about 50 men, and so now Knowlton and Leach another 200 men march around the British flank and intend to attack them from the rear. Washington hopes that if these rangers and these men can get to the British rear and the American army um, and the men in the front where he had just deployed right below the hill keep the British at bay and they just kind of encircle them trapping them and causing them to have no avenue of retreat you know just capturing these couple hundred men and neutralizing their effectiveness. Unfortunately, whether it's due to miscommunication, misdirection, whatever happens, miscalculation, Knowlton and Leach march their men straight into the flank of the British Army and not into their rear. So they come right up on their flank, smash right into them. The British are just as surprised as the Americans are at this. 
the British fire back. They're well trained. You know, they're they're seasoned veteran soldiers. They're well trained to deal with stuff like this. They fire back at them immediately, and um, right off the bat, um, Knowlton is killed, shot dead right on the scene. Um, and Major Leach is shot himself. He'd become mortally wounded, and he would die a couple days later. So right off the bat, Knowlton is dead. Um, Leach is mortally wounded. They have no, the Americans are now confused, but yet somehow, some way, these uh, you know these these raw men who haven't really seen much action are determined to push on, and they they keep pushing forward under the command of uh, lower officers, you know, less senior officers, junior officers, and they and they turn the British flank. And at this time, though, as they begin to turn the British flank, the British are now well aware of what's going on and send even more reinforcements up, including a group of artillerymen with two three-pounder light cannons. And then Washington, of course, seeing more British uh, troops arriving on the scene, says, you know what, I didn't really want a major battle to happen, but let me reinforce my men. And he sends a couple more hundred men down. So eventually, the American forces number about 1,800 men, the British forces number some 1,600, and in such a pitched battle here, uh, for about an hour and a half, the armies are at a stalemate. It, eventually, both sides run really low on ammunition. The British run out of cannon uh, cannon ammunition, you know, shot, shell, balls for their, for their three-pounders. And um, the uh, men have been fighting for now over two hours. They're tired, they're exhausted, they're low in ammo. The Americans are as as well. But the British being in an untenable position, not anywhere near their main forces of troops, decide to retreat back to their main lines near New York City. Eventually, the Americans, realizing the British are retreating, also retreat. Washington is afraid to pursue the British soldiers outright. He's worried that if he pursues them, he'll provoke a more direct engagement and that will result in uh, a direct battle, which again, he's just suffered two bad defeats at Kipps Bay and a horrible one in Brooklyn just a couple weeks before. He doesn't want to go through that again. So he'll, he's satisfied with the fact that his men held their own against the British and it provided a strong and much needed morale boost to the American uh, army that the men were pretty much tired, weary, and were beginning to think they could never beat the British. And in this small action, they're able to hold their ground and keep the British at, at bay, holding on to their positions at Harlem Heights. In total, the British would suffer about 78 to 80 men killed or wounded, uh, killed, and over 150 men wounded over 200 casualties. The Americans would suffer 30 dead and 100 wounded for about 130 casualties. So pretty even. British had a little bit more than the Americans, but it's a, it's a brief skirmish, and yet the Americans get the, the morale boost they need. Um, and the Americans will hold on to their positions in Harlem Heights for another month. There won't be any major fighting until the middle of October. Um, and eventually, William Howe, worried about attacking the high ground, um, in Harlem Heights, does not want to send his men up the slopes against 9,000 British uh, um, continental soldiers and, you know, endure another defeat like Bunker Hill. And so he decides to move his army up the uh, the East, R- East River and land in the Bronx in an attempt to encircle the Americans in Manhattan. The Americans will, again, narrowly escape being entrapped in Manhattan Island and retreat across um, from Manhattan, across the Bronx River, into Westchester County and move up to White Plains. Um, And if it wasn't for the Battle of Pell's Point and John Glover's Marblehead Fisherman, the American Army would have likely been captured right then and there. But that's a discussion for the next video. We'll talk about another narrow escape for the Americans, but not today. That's next time. This has been the Battle of Harlem Heights. Thank you so much for watching. Rate, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you next time on the Fall 1776 Lecture Series on Patriot Pets. Have a wonderful day.